everyone! In this episode of Building Vilda, we finally started painting! We are taking you back to the cockpit and the salon. If you remember, not too long ago, we built a few pieces of furniture for the cockpit, like the seat, the step, the steering panel, which we hadn't glued in place at the time. So this is what we are doing now. And we hope you're not too scared by the mess that you see around the cockpit because we have taken really good care of that. So after the tools sorting and some cleaning, we are quite ready to start giving Vilda some color. Finally, the time to start painting has come. We've done some sorting in the, in the shed. So, Vilda now looks like this. She's clean. Well, not clean, but uh, not full of uh, stuff everywhere. I managed to get the steering panel in the other day, as well as the step and uh, seating here. This is a table that will also collapse into a daybed sort of deal here and uh, she's coming together and just the other day we sanded down the roof this is ready for for paint for for primer because uh, that's all that's ever is going to be here. Uh, the uh, uh, salon roof will salon roof will be covered with a liner in any case. So uh, we'll get some primer up here, and uh, that's going to feel good because of the weather. That's. Uh, what we will be doing, working with the next couple of days. Uh, the primer can work until, or we can use the primer to minus 10 degrees and, and Melbourne doesn't get that cold. So as long as we have dry surfaces, we're fine. And uh, yeah. Since by this time we were done with painting the salon roof and all the cockpit furniture was glued in place, we moved on to clean and sand the bulkhead so that it could get some of that fantastic salmon pink color too. Ready. So, 600 milliliters of paint? Plus 150. Okay. Right? That must be right. One to four. By one. Mm -hmm. So I'm very, very, very precise. <laughs> I wish I could do it more precisely, but the paint is so thick, it's hard. <laughs> Oh, it's coming, it's coming. Five fifty. Yeah, it's really thick, it doesn't. Yeah. So a little bit more, yeah. smidgen more. Yeah. Just a little bit. Then this is why it's so hard. Yeah. But you're doing good. A little bit more, maybe. A little bit more. Now it comes a little. Yeah. Oh! Yeah, exactly. <laughs> like that. <laughs> nah, it's perfect. Oh, that's Look pretty at good. that. Yeah. That's pretty good. Mm -hmm. Okay, and then we harden it to 750. Mm -hmm. I don't think it's perfect, like this time. A bit like maple syrup. Is that what it looks like? I don't know. Well, I think we mix them in here. Uh, oh. to make sure that uh, when we pour it over to a new container. new container, we actually have the correct mixture of, uh, mm -hmm. of stuff. 
and you shouldn't drink this shit. But it is a very low VOC paint. But, yes, but in a well ventilated area, it's it's uh, not oh, terrible. Yeah. No, there's plenty of water based paints that are just as bad, um, mm -hmm. or more commonly oil based paints, uh, of course. Uh, they have all sorts of stuff in them that you shouldn't be drinking or breathing. And these industrial paints, uh, I think. Or it feels like there's more control. This is maybe not so important now because I did this before, in the big when can, you, ah, of course, before. Before pour, uh, pouring yeah. into the small of container. Yeah, and then I used a paint mixer and mm -hmm. stirred for yeah maybe half an hour or something like that. I was quite thorough. Mm -hmm. But it's definitely needed when you buy a paint like this, a high solid paint, because uh, the solids drop to this bottom. To the bottom of the... Yeah. Okay. Even though, I mean, <laughs> it's a pretty even paint because it is mostly solid. So, good paint. Yeah, nice. Terribly ugly yeah. color, but good paint. Ah, it does what it's supposed to do. Yeah. It's a very nice color for your nails. For a handbag or nails, yes. <laughs> beautiful kind of color. Well, actually, it's a terribly ugly color for a handbag. Yes, uh, that's what I was But it, I think common. Hmm? Yeah, I think like Chanel or something has something as horrible as this. Yeah. It's like your favorite color or something. And uh, another day of painting, and Rox and I have accomplished quite a bit. I don't know how much you can see of this. The so too much, yeah, I don't know what that's called, too much light coming in from the wrong angle. But we've painted this bucket, both sides. We're going for a coral pink boat <laughs> for now. <laughs> but uh, no, uh, primer, and it makes such a difference. It's insane. It feels very pink, okay, but also very much lighter, and more uniform, and and uh, yeah, feels uh, a lot better. It's mentally, this is fantastic. You can see progress. A couple of hours of work, and suddenly you have a new boat. So, so that's amazing. See, we've left out paint in a bunch of areas and that's because we have some some glass work to do uh, and while cleaning I've found more glass work that I thought was done but that hasn't been so uh, yeah that doesn't matter it's it's stuff we have to do but moving forward So, after a few hours of constant sanding, uh, the boat is ready for the first piece of uh, uh, fairing. So I've 
sand it on these tapes so that I won't need as much fairing compound as I otherwise would. The, f the boat has enough fairing compound on it as it is on the inside, so I don't want to add to that on the outside. But she is looking real good. And it looks to me like fairing this, yeah, should be okay. And uh, you might have seen me using a big sander. And that's a sander that's not designed for for this purpose, but for plasterboard. Making big, smooth surfaces. And that's what I'm trying to do. So, should be about the right tool, I figure. As long as it holds up, and it seems to. It seems to hold up quite well. Yeah, really happy with the first step here. We'll see how it goes. <laughs> 